This day in history 19th of February. Karl Lagerfeld, born September 10, 1933, Hamburg, Germany, died February 19, 2019, Paris, France, German fashion designer and photographer. Lagerfeld began his career in fashion in the 1950s, working for several top fashion houses including Balma, Patou, and Chloe before joining Chanel in 1983. As the creative director of Chanel from 1983 until his death, he oversaw every aspect of the fashion house's creative output, from designing collections to overseeing advertising campaigns and store displays. He was instrumental in revitalizing the Chanel brand, helping it regain its position as one of the top fashion houses in the world. He was also the creative director of the Italian fur and leather goods fashion house Fendi, as well as his own eponymous fashion label. Throughout his career, he collaborated on a variety of fashion and art-related projects. Lagerfeld was recognized for his signature white hair, black sunglasses, fingerless gloves, and high-starch detachable collars. This day in history 19th of February. This day in history 19th of February. Harper Lee, born April 28, 1926, Monroeville, Alabama, U.S., died February 19th. 2016, Monroeville, American writer-novelist, was an American novelist whose 1960 novel To Kill a Mockingbird won the 1961 Pulitzer Prize and became a classic of modern American literature. She assisted her close friend Truman Capote in his research for the book In Cold Blood, 1966. Her second novel, Go Set a Watchman, was an earlier draft of Mockingbird that was published in July 2015 as a sequel. The plot and characters of To Kill a Mockingbird are loosely based on Lee's observations of her family and neighbors in Monroeville, Alabama, as well as a childhood event that occurred near her hometown in 1936. The novel deals with racist attitudes, and the irrationality of adult attitudes towards race and class in the deep south of the 1930s as depicted through the eyes of two children. Lee received numerous accolades and honorary degrees, including the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2007, which was awarded for her contribution to literature. This day in history 19th of February. This day in history 20th of February. John H. Glenn, Jr., the oldest of seven astronauts selected by NASA for Project Mercury spaceflight training, and later a U.S. Senator became on this day in 1962 the first American to orbit Earth, was an American Marine Corps aviator, engineer, astronaut, businessman, and politician. He was the third American in space, and the first American to orbit the Earth, circling it three times in 1962. Following his retirement from NASA, he served from 1974 to 1999 as a U.S. Senator from Ohio. In 1998, he flew into space again at the age of 77. Before joining NASA, Glenn was a distinguished fighter pilot in World War II, the Chinese Civil War, and the Korean War. He shot down three MiGs and was awarded six Distinguished Flying Crosses and 18 Air Medals. In 1957, he made the first supersonic transcontinental flight across the United States. His onboard camera took the first continuous, panoramic photograph of the United States. He was one of the Mercury 7 military test pilots selected in 1959 by NASA as the nation's first astronauts. On February 20, 1962, Glenn flew the Friendship 7 mission, becoming the first American to orbit the Earth, the third American, and the fifth person in history to be in space. He received the NASA Distinguished Service Medal in 1962, the Congressional Space Medal of Honor in 1978, was inducted into the U.S. Astronaut Hall of Fame in 1990 and received the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2012. Glenn resigned from NASA in January 1964, a member of the Democratic Party. Glenn was first elected to the Senate in 1974 and served for 24 years, until January 1999. In 1998, at age 77, Glenn flew on Space Shuttle Discovery's STS-95 mission, making him the oldest person to enter Earth orbit, the only person to fly in both the Mercury and the Space Shuttle programs, 
and the first member of Congress to visit space since Congressman Bill Nelson in 1986. Glenn, both the oldest and the last surviving member of the Mercury 7, died at the age of 95 on December 8, 2016. This day in history 20th of February. This day in history 20th of February. Mir's core module was launched on February 20th, 1986. It had the form of a stepped cylinder about 13 meters, 43 feet, long and 4.2 meters, 13.8 feet, in diameter at its widest point. The module had a docking port at each end and four ports sighted radially at its forward end. On March 13, 1986, cosmonauts Leonid Kazim and Vladimir Solovyov were sent aloft aboard a Soyuz T spacecraft to rendezvous with Mir and become its first occupants. Between March 1987 and April 1996, five expansion modules were added to the core unit, Kvant-1, 1987, an astrophysics observatory, Kvant-2, 1989, containing supplementary life support equipment and a large airlock, Crystal, 1990, a materials sciences laboratory, and Spectre, 1995, and Priroda, 1996. Two science modules containing remote sensing instruments for ecological and environmental studies of Earth. Except for its first occupants, Mir's cosmonaut crews traveled between the station and Earth and upgraded Soyuz TM spacecraft, and supplies were transported by robotic progress cargo ferries. Mir supported human habitation from March 14, 1986, to June 15, 2000 which included an uninterrupted stretch of occupancy of almost 10 years. It hosted more than 100 people from 12 countries, including a series of U.S. astronauts in 1995-98 to as part of a Mir Space Shuttle Cooperative endeavor. Between January 1994 and March 1995, Mir cosmonaut physician Valery Polyakov set an endurance record of 438 continuous days in space longer than the approximately nine months estimated for a crewed voyage to the planet Mars. Designed for only a five-year life, the aging Mir suffered a series of equipment failures and accidents in 1996-97 but remained in service. On March 23, 2001, the abandoned Mir made a controlled re-entry, with the surviving pieces falling into the Pacific Ocean. This day in history 20th of February. This day in history 21st of February. W. H. Auden, born February 21, 1907, York, Yorkshire, England, died September 29, 1973, Vienna, Austria, English-born poet. Auden's poetry was noted for its stylistic and technical achievement, its engagement with politics, morals, love, and religion, and its variety in tone, form, and content. Some of his best-known poems are about love, such as Funeral Blues, on political and social themes such as September 1, 1939, and The Shield of Achilles, on cultural and psychological themes such as The Age of Anxiety, and on religious themes such as For the Time Being and Ori Canonici. Auden was born in York in a professional middle-class family. He attended various English independent or public, schools and studied English at Christ Church, Oxford. After a few months in Berlin in 1928-29, he spent five years, 1930-35, teaching in British private preparatory schools. In 1939, he moved to the United States. He became an American citizen in 1946, retaining his British citizenship. Auden taught from 1941 to 1945 in American universities followed by occasional visiting professorships in the 1950s. Auden came to wide public attention in 1930 with his first book, Poems. It was followed in 1932 by The Orators. Three plays written in collaboration with Christopher Isherwood between 1935 and 1938 built his reputation as a left-wing political writer. Auden moved to the United States partly to escape this reputation, and his work in the 1940s including the long poems, for the time being, and The Sea and the Mirror, focused on religious themes. He won the Pulitzer Prize for Poetry for his 1947 long poem The Age of Anxiety, the title of which became a popular phrase describing the modern era. 
From 1956 to 1961, he was professor of poetry at Oxford. His lectures were popular with students and faculty, and served as the basis for his 1962 prose collection The Dyer's Hand. Auden was a prolific writer of prose essays and reviews on literary, political, psychological, and religious subjects, and he worked at various times on documentary films, poetic plays, and other forms of performance. Throughout his career he was both controversial and influential. Critical views on his work ranged from sharply dismissive, treating him as a lesser figure than W. B. Yeats and T. S. Eliot, to strongly affirmative. As in Joseph Brodsky's statement that he had the greatest mind of the twentieth century. After his death, his poems became known to a much wider public through films, broadcasts, and popular media. This Day in History 21st of February This Day in History 21st of February Anais Nin, born February 21, 1903, Neuilly, France, died January 14, 1977, Los Angeles, California, U.S., French-born author of novels and short stories, was a French-born American essayist, novelist, and writer of short stories and erotica. Born to Cuban parents in France, Nin was the daughter of the composer Joaquin Nin and the classically trained singer Rosa Colmo. Nin spent her early years in Spain and Cuba, about 16 years in Paris, 1924-1940, and the remaining half of her life in the United States, where she became an established author. Nin wrote journals prolifically from age 11 until her death. Her journals, many of which were published during her lifetime, detail her private thoughts and personal relationships. Her journals also describe her marriages to Hugh Parker Geiler and Rupert Pohl, in addition to her numerous affairs, including those with psychoanalyst Otto Rank and writer Henry Miller, both of whom profoundly influenced Nien and her writing. In addition to her journals, Nien wrote several novels, critical studies, essays, short stories, and volumes of erotic literature. Much of her work, including the collections of Erotica Delta of Venus and Little Birds, was published posthumously amid renewed critical interest in her life and work. Nien spent her later life in Los Angeles, California, where she died of cervical cancer in 1977. She was a finalist for the Neustadt International Prize for Literature in 1976. This Day in History 21st of February This Day in History 22nd of February Lake Placid 1980 Olympic Winter Games Athletic Festival held in Lake Placid, New York, United States that took place February. 13 to 24, 1980. The Lake Placid Games were the 13th occurrence of the Winter Olympic Games. The Miracle on Ice was an ice hockey game during the 1980 Winter Olympics in Lake Placid, New York. It was played between the hosting United States and the Soviet Union on February 22, 1980, during the medal round of the men's hockey tournament. Though the Soviet Union was a four time defending gold medalist and heavily favored, the United States upset them and won 4-3. The Soviet Union had won the gold medal in five of the six previous Winter Olympic Games, and they were the favorites to win once more in Lake Placid. The team consisted primarily of full-time players, professional in all but name with significant experience in international play. By contrast, the United States team, led by head coach Herb Brooks, was composed mostly of amateur players, with only four players with minimal minor league experience. The United States had the youngest team in the tournament and U.S. national team history. In the group stage, both the Soviet and U.S. teams were unbeaten. The U.S. achieved several surprising results, including a 2-2 draw against Sweden and a 7-3 upset victory over second-place favorite Czechoslovakia. For the first game in the medal round, the United States played the Soviets finishing the first period tied at 2-2, and the Soviets leading 3-2 following the second, the U.S. team scored two more goals to take their first lead midway in the third and final period, then held on and won 4-3. Two days later, the U.S. won the gold medal by beating Finland in their final game. The Soviet Union took the silver medal by beating Sweden. The victory became one of the most iconic moments of the games and in U.S. sports. 
Equally well-known was the television call of the final seconds of the game by Al Michaels for ABC in which he declared, Do you believe in miracles? Yes. In 1999, Sports Illustrated named the miracle on ice the top sports moment of the 20th century. As part of its centennial celebration in 2008, the International Ice Hockey Federation named the Miracle on Ice as the best international ice hockey story of the past 100 years. This day in history 22nd of February. This day in history 23rd of February. British-born comedian Stan Laurel, of the comedy team Laurel and Hardy, died at the age of 74. Stan Laurel, born June 16, 1890, Ulverston, England, died February 23, 1965, Santa Monica, California, U.S. English comedic film actor. Although he played a simple-minded bumbler, Stan Laurel was actually the major creative force behind the comedy duo. Laurel made some 100 comedies with Oliver Hardy between 1921 and 1950. Stan Jefferson, the son of a theatrical manager and performer, became a music hall comedian during his teenage years and performed in circuses, musicals, and dramas. By 1910 he was understudying Charlie Chaplin in Fred Carnot's traveling comedy troupe. After the Carnot Company disbanded during an American tour in 1913, Jefferson worked in American films and vaudeville for several years, during which time he changed his surname to Laurel after deciding that a stage name with 13 letters was bad luck. His first movie short was Nuts in May, 1917. He found minor success as the star of his own series of comedy shorts in the early 1920s, but within a few years, acting took second place to work as a director and gag writer. He signed with Hal Roach Studios in 1925 with the understanding that his primary duties would be behind the cameras. A year later he and Oliver Hardy both became members of Roach's All-Stars, an ensemble of screen comedians. Laurel was soon coaxed back in front of the camera, and by 1927 he was teamed with Hardy. Their first successful joint comedy was the silent movie Putting Pants on Philip, 1927. In their comedies, they played two friends who were naive and eternally optimistic. As Laurel himself described it, they were two minds without a single thought. Laurel was the skinny guileless nitwit who caused most of their troubles while Hardy was the robust and self-important windbag whose plans always went awry. Armed with impeccable slapstick timing and an arsenal of hilarious facial expressions, they typically managed to convert a simple, everyday situation into another nice mess. Innocent, harmless, and utterly incompetent. Laurel was frequently knocked around by the irascible Hardy. He was known for his signature whimpering cry, dramatically blank stare, an iconic toothless smile. He characteristically sported a too small bowler hat, under which he housed a head of unkempt hair that he would frequently tousle. As the silent film era ended, the pair achieved great popularity in comedies such as The Battle of the Century, 1927, Leave Em Laughing, 1928, Two Tars, 1928, Liberty, 1929, and Big Business, 1929. This day in history 23rd of February. This day in history 24th of February. Steve Jobs, born February 24, 1955, in San Francisco, California, U.S., died October 5, 2011, in Palo Alto, California, was co-founder of Apple Computers. Stephen Paul Jobs was an American businessman, inventor, and investor best known for co-founding the technology giant Apple. Jobs was also the founder of Next and chairman and majority shareholder of Pixar. He was a pioneer of the personal computer revolution of the 1970s and 1980s, along with his early business partner and fellow Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak. Jobs was born in San Francisco in 1955 and adopted shortly afterwards. He attended Reed College in 1972 before withdrawing that same year. In 1974, he traveled through India, seeking enlightenment before later studying Zen Buddhism. He and Wozniak co-founded Apple in 1976 to further develop and sell Wozniak's Apple One personal computer. Together, the duo gained fame and wealth a year later with the production and sale of the Apple II, one of the first highly successful mass-produced microcomputers. 
Jobs saw the commercial potential of the Xerox Alto in 1979, which was mouse-driven and had a graphical user interface GUI. This led to the development of the unsuccessful Apple Lisa in 1983, followed by the breakthrough Macintosh in 1984, the first mass-produced computer with a GUI. The Macintosh introduced the desktop publishing industry in 1985 with the addition of the Apple LaserWriter, the first laser printer to feature vector graphics. In 1985, Jobs departed Apple after a long power struggle with the company's board and its then-CEO, John Scully. That same year, Jobs took some Apple employees with him to found Next, a computer platform development company that specialized in computers for higher education and business markets serving as its CEO. In 1986, he helped develop the visual effects industry by funding the computer graphics division of Lucasfilm that eventually spun off independently as Pixar, which produced the first 3D computer animated feature film Toy Story, 1995, and became a leading animation studio, producing over 27 films since. In 1997, Jobs returned to Apple as CEO after the company's acquisition of Next. He was largely responsible for reviving Apple, which was on the verge of bankruptcy. He worked closely with British designer Johnny Ive to develop a line of products and services that had larger cultural ramifications, beginning with the Think Different advertising campaign, and leading to the iMac, iTunes, Mac OS X Apple Store, iPod, iTunes Store, iPhone, App Store, and iPad. In 2003, Jobs was diagnosed with a pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor. He died of respiratory arrest related to the tumor in 2011, and in 2022, was posthumously awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom. This Day in History 24th of February This Day in History 25th of February Anthony Burgess, born February 25, 1917, Manchester, England, died November 22nd, 1993, London, English novelist, critic, John Anthony Burgess Wilson, who published under the name Anthony Burgess. Although Burgess was primarily a comic writer, his dystopian satire A Clockwork Orange remains his best-known novel. In 1971, it was adapted into a controversial film by Stanley Kubrick, which Burgess said was chiefly responsible for the popularity of the book. Burgess produced numerous other novels, including the Enderby Quartet and Earthly Powers. He wrote librettos and screenplays, including the 1977 television miniseries Jesus of Nazareth. He worked as a literary critic for several publications, including The Observer and The Guardian, and wrote studies of classic writers, notably James Joyce. A versatile linguist, Burgess lectured in phonetics and translated Cyrano de Bergerac, Oedipus Rex, and the opera Carmen, among others. Burgess was nominated and shortlisted for the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1973. Burgess also composed over 250 musical works. He considered himself as much a composer as an author, although he achieved considerably more success in writing. Early in Burgess's life In 1917, Burgess was born at 91 Carisbrook Street in Harpery, a suburb of Manchester, England, to Catholic parents, Joseph and Elizabeth Wilson. He described his background as lower middle class. Growing up during the Great Depression, his parents, who were shopkeepers, were fairly well off, as the demand for their tobacco and alcohol wares remained constant. He was known in childhood as Jack, Little Jack, and Johnny Eagle. At his confirmation, the name Anthony was added and he became John Anthony Burgess Wilson. He began using the pen name Anthony Burgess upon the publication of his 1956 novel Time for a Tiger. This Day in History 25th of February This Day in History 26th of February Fats Domino, born February 26, 1928, New Orleans, Louisiana, U.S., died October 24, 2017, Harvey, Louisiana, American singer and pianist. Domino was an American pianist, singer, and songwriter, one of the pioneers of rock and roll music. Domino sold more than 65 million records. Born in New Orleans to a French Creole family, Domino signed to Imperial Records in 1949. 
his first single, The Fat Man, is cited by some historians as the first rock and roll single and the first to sell more than one million copies. Domino continued to work with the song's co-writer Dave Bartholomew, contributing his distinctive rolling piano style to Lloyd Price's Laudy Miss Claudie, 1952, and scoring a string of mainstream hits beginning with Ain't That a Shame, 1955. Between 1955 and 1960, he had 11 top 10 U.S. pop hits. By 1955, five of his records had sold more than a million copies, being certified gold. Domino was shy and modest by nature but made a significant contribution to the rock and roll genre. Elvis Presley declared Domino a huge influence on me when I started and when they first met in 1959, described him as the real king of rock and roll. The Beatles were also heavily influenced by Domino. Four of Domino's records were named to the Grammy Hall of Fame for their significance. Blueberry Hill, Ain't That a Shame, Walking to New Orleans, and The Fat Man. He was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as part of its first group of inductees in 1986. The Associated Press estimates that during his career, Domino sold more than 110 million records. This Day in History 26th of February. This Day in History 26th of February. Johnny Cash, born February 26, 1932, in Kingsland, Arkansas, U.S., died September 12, 2003, Nashville, Tennessee, was an American singer and songwriter. An American country singer-songwriter. Most of Cash's music contains themes of sorrow, moral tribulation, and redemption, especially songs from the later stages of his career. He was known for his deep, calm bass baritone voice, the distinctive sound of his Tennessee Three backing band characterized by train-like chugging guitar rhythms, a rebelliousness coupled with an increasingly somber and humble demeanor, free prison concerts, and a trademark all-black stage wardrobe, which earned him the nickname The Man in Black. Born to poor cotton farmers in Kingsland, Arkansas, Cash rose to fame during the mid-1950s in the burgeoning rockabilly scene in Memphis, Tennessee, after serving four years in the Air Force. He traditionally began his concerts by simply introducing himself, Hello, I'm Johnny Cash, followed by Folsom Prison Blues, one of his signature songs. His other signature songs include I Walk the Line, Ring of Fire, Get Rhythm, and Man in Black. He also recorded humorous numbers like One Piece at a Time, and A Boy Named Sue, a duet with his future wife June called Jackson, followed by many further duets after their wedding and railroad songs such as Hey, Porter, Orange Blossom Special, and Rock Island Line. During the last stage of his career, he covered songs by contemporary rock artists. Among his most notable covers were Hurt, by Nine Inch Nails, Rusty Cage, by Soundgarden, and Personal Jesus, by Depeche Mode. Cash is one of the best-selling music artists of all time, having sold more than 90 million records worldwide. His genre-spanning music embraced country, rock and roll, rockabilly, blues, folk, and gospel sounds. This crossover appeal earned him the rare honor of being inducted into the country music, rock and roll, and gospel music halls of fame. His music career was dramatized in the 2005 biopic Walk the Line, in which Cash was portrayed by American film actor Joaquin Phoenix. This day in history 26th of February, 